Hey kiddos and welcome to the last part, the final section um, in um, section 13.2, predicting redox reactions. And all you really need to do is just be able to use your data booklet, uh, your redox table. Okay, so recall that a redox reaction can be explained as a transfer of electrons. So we're transferring electrons from your reducing agent to your oxidizing agent. We can look at a chemical equation and make a prediction on whether or not it will work by using a redox table and the spontaneity rule. So two things we're going to be doing, we're looking at our redox table and then we're deciding if the reaction is spontaneous or not. Remember spontaneous, oxidizing agent is above reducing agent, non-spontaneous reducing agent is above the oxidizing agent. And remember, non-spontaneous just means that the reaction actually won't happen which sometimes we actually don't want the reaction to happen. Okay, so let's take a look at um, uh, the steps and then some hints and then I'm going to walk you through two examples really slowly giving you every step um, and then there's a few other examples that I'll just throw at you so you can have a general idea. So your first step is you're going to list all entities present and label the possible oxidizing and reducing agents. I'll show you how to do that in an example, but here's some hints. Um, aqueous solution, so anytime you see the word aqueous or you see the word solution, you have to know that water, liquid, is a reactant. Anytime you have an acid or you hear the, or you read the word acidic, uh, uh, acidified, you know that H plus AQ ions are one of the reactants. Basic solutions have OH as a reactant, um, the hydroxide ion. Some oxidizing and reducing agents are combos, they're combinations. For example, permanganate um, in your data booklet, in your redox table is never by itself, it's with something else. Water, uh, finally water, iron, copper, uh, tin, and chromium, they may act as either oxidizing or reducing agents. They're actually found on the left hand side and they're actually found on the right hand side. So when you list your entities, you have to uh, search for them on the on both sides, on the oxidizing agent side and on the reducing agent side. So label the strongest, then number two, you label the strongest oxidizing agent using the chart, it's highest on the left, and write the equation for its reduction following the forward arrow. You are going to label the strongest reducing agent using the chart, it's the lowest on the right, and write the equations for its oxidation. Why? Why do we have to flip the equation, okay, why? Because the reducing agent is a reactant in, um, in the solution. Like the question will say, I'm taking this substance, I'm taking this substance, I'm mixing it. Those two substances are your reactants. So you have to flip, if you find the reducing agent, you have to flip it so that um, it's on the right, the left hand side, okay? And on the redox table, the uh, reducing agent is found as a product you have to flip it and use it as a reactant. That's important. That's a really important one, number three. Uh, question, uh, step number four, balance the number of electrons lost and gained in the half reaction equations by multiplying one or both of the equations by a number, then add the two half reactions to get a, a total net ionic equation. You have to balance the uh, electrons so that you cancel them out at the end. So that's important as well. And finally, using the spontane uh, spontaneity rule, predict whether the net ionic equation represents a spontaneous or a non-spontaneous redox reaction. So those are awesome. Those are your five steps. Let's look at the steps one by one. Okay, so here's a, a, a typical example. Suppose a solution of potassium permanganate is slowly poured into an, an acid, uh, acidified something sulfate solution. Does a redox reaction occur? And if it does, what is the, the reaction equation? And describe two diagnostic tests for your prediction. I'm not going to really worry about this part, and I apologize that this is in the way, but you'll see the question again. Cool, so here we go. Uh, we, what we're doing is, what I like to do is I like to break up exactly what is going on so that I don't get confused and I don't miss anything. So we have potassium permanganate. So if I dissociate potass potassium permanganate, I have potassium ions and permanganate ions. So far, so good. I see the word solution. When I see the word solution, I automatically have water liquid 
uh, in the liquid state as one of my reactants. Reactant, reactant, another reactant. Acidified iron 2 sulfate solution, that was the, the part that was covered up. Your iron 2 sulfate solution, so I have my iron 2 ion, my sulfate ion, and I also have the H plus because it's acidified. Acidified means there has to be an acid, and an acid is demonstrated by your H plus um, ion, okay? So let's take, now what you have to do is all of these, you have to find them. So if you take a look over here, I find my permanganate. Now my permanganate is always followed by H plus. H plus is a thing, and so is permanganate. So this whole, that whole uh, equation here, that's one of my OAs. Okay, um, here I have sulfate. I find sulfate here. It's plus H plus, which is the thing. And I have sulfate here plus water. That's also a thing. So those two are also included in my redox table. What I like to do is I just like to use those little sticky pad tab things so that at the end, all you're looking for is your strongest oxidizing agent and your strongest reducing agent. Here's an H plus because of acidified. Um, I have water by itself because uh, not because of um, the word solution. Water shows up as an OA and an RA. That's okay. Whatever it is, these guys, wherever they are, you have to identify them. Okay. And lastly, I have my Fe2+. Notice that Fe2+, is found here and here. So I have to actually identify both. After I've identified each one of these, okay, each one, all I have to do out of all, and there's my potassium ion, out of all of these, I only look at two. I look at my strongest reducing agent and my strongest oxidizing agent. That's what I do. That's what I gather from that. So here's the uh, answer in your textbook, and this is how they labeled it. This is an OA. These two are one OA because they come as a combo. H plus is also an oxidizing agent by itself. Iron is both an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent, and sulfuric acid, or SO4 2 minus, and H2O is an oxidizing agent. There's an error in the textbook. Actually, they forgot SO4 plus H plus. So now, what we have to do is just identify your strongest oxidizing agent and your strongest reducing agent. Here's my strongest oxidizing agent. Here's my strongest reducing agent. Then I copy out that exact um, uh, reduction half reaction for each of them, keeping in mind, kiddos, that for when you found the strongest reducing agent, you have to flip the reaction so that Fe2 plus is a reactant. So here is my uh, reduction half reaction for my strongest oxidizing agent, and here is my oxidation half reaction for my strongest reducing agent. See here how the electrons are in the uh, pro uh, reactant, sorry, the electrons here are in the products. That has to be a thing. You're always flipping one. You're always going to flip your strongest reducing agent. Um, okay? And you're going to make it, instead of the reduction half reaction, you're going to give the oxidation half reaction. So then what do you do? You just write them out. This is my strongest uh, oxidizing agent. Here's my strongest reducing agent. I'm multiplying this by five. Why? Because there's five electrons here. I'm, and I copy these out exactly out of the, the data booklet. You're not really doing much other than picking the strongest ones and then balancing your electrons. I have one electron here. I have five here. I have to multiply everything by five so that I can then cancel my electrons. And this is my net ionic equation. I'm almost done because now all we have to do is decide if it's, um, if it's going to be spontaneous or not spontaneous. It's spontaneous because out of all the oxidizing agents, I take the strongest oxidizing agent. Out of all the reducing agents, I take my strongest reducing agent. My strongest oxidizing agent is above the strongest reducing agent, so it's a spontaneous reaction, which means the reaction will happen. Here's another example. In a chemical in, uh, industry, could copper pipe be used to transport a hydrochloric acid solution? To answer this question, predict the redox reaction and its spontaneity. So actually, in order for it to be a good, a good holder, a good container, it, it, it should not react. Because if it reacted, the hydrochloric acid would eat away at the copper, and it, that, that container would be rendered useless. So copper pipe, 
Copper pipe is a solid, so it's CUS. HCl solution, kiddos. H, uh, HCl AQ is a, if I write this down, it's actually an acid, right? So I have H plus, and because if it's a solution, I have to have my water. And of, chlor of course, my chloride ion is a dissociation or a actually ionization of um, hydrochloric acid. So here I have them all. Here's my uh, copper solid. Here's my water. Here's my other water. Here's my H plus. Uh, here's my chloride ion solution and my chloride uh, ion plus my water. So I looked everywhere in the data booklet and I was able to find all of these. Once I found them all, once I use my little tabs to find them all, all I have to worry about is my strongest reducing agent and my strongest oxidizing agent. Notice what's going on here. My strongest reducing agent is above my strongest oxidizing agent, so it's going to be a, um, a non-spontaneous reaction. But let's go ahead and write this out. Remember, we have to flip when, we're, when we have identified our strongest re uh, reducing agent, here's my strongest oxidizing agent. I copied exactly. Here's two electrons, two electrons. I don't have to balance the electrons. They cancel out. And I go ahead and just add them all together. Oops, I was supposed to cancel these out. Sorry, canceled the wrong thing out. And this is my net ionic equation. And it's non-spontaneous. Since it's non-spontaneous, then yes. I could use a copper pipe to carry hydrochloric acid. If it were spontaneous, no, I could not use copper pipe to carry the hydrochloric acid because the hydrochloric acid would uh, react with the copper pipe and actually break it down. So that would be completely useless. So kind of fun, hey guys. Here's another example. Liquid bromine and uh, chlorine gas are added to a solution of copper two sulfate, a solution, water, liquid bromine, chlorine gas are added to a solution of copper two sulfate, okay, and a copper strip. This is another copper solid. So all you have to do is look for the entities on your redox table, identify the strongest oxidizing agents, the strongest reducing agent, make sure electrons are balanced, and what do you get? you should get at the end this. So make sure you give this a try and see what happens, okay? Uh, yet another example, a few drops of mercury, so here's my mercury, um, are dropped into a solu uh, solution, <laughs> there's my water, of sulfuric acid, so uh, there's my acid, my H+, my sulfate, and a solution of potassium permanganate. All right, so look them up in your data booklet, Go ahead and find all of those, identify them, use a little sticky or a pencil, but if you put marks on it, you're just going to find, you're going to mark your data booklet all over the place. I, I like, if you guys were here, actually, what I did last semester is I bought everybody a little package of the little tabs, so I apologize that I don't have one for you. So uh, you find your SOA and your SRA. Typically, when you have permanganate kiddos, that's always going to be an SOA. Add them all up, make sure that your uh, electrons are balanced, balance your electrons, and that's your answer. Okay, I'm going to talk about disproportionation. I'm talking about it, but I'm not going to test you on it. I'm not even going to worry about giving you too much practice, if any at all. I'm just going to talk about it, and uh, like I said, you're not going to be tested on it. It's a reaction in which a species is both oxidized and reduced, and you know water is an example. Water can, uh, is, is, an, is an OA and an RA. We call that disproportionation. It may occur when a substance can act as both, or, both an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. Here's an example. Will a solution of chromium-2 chloride be stable? Predict the redox reaction and its spontaneity. Basically, you list everything up, and you'll notice that uh, your SRA and your SOA are the chromium ion, and it's non-spontaneous. All it means is that it's just a funky way of looking at a substance that is going to be your SRA and your SOA. But I, like I said, I'm not going to test you on it, so it's all good. And I'm not even going to assign homework. I'll, I'll put the homework up on Monday. I just thought I would throw this up today, just to, if you wanted to get a heads up um, over the weekend. And that's all of 13.2. Okay, God bless. Have a great weekend.